Triskel Linux. So this is what you're looking at right now. This is a basic installation of Triskel Linux. So as you can see, it comes with this nice little mountain background. As you can see down here, you have the menu and you can see a variety of different applications that come with it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the system requirements first. So as you can see, the general requirements are listed here and it can run on a very lightweight system. Right now, you're you're seeing it perform on a ThinkPad T430, which came out, I think it was around 2012. So it's not the newest computer, but it is my daily driver. And in fact, I edit and render all videos on this channel using the very same T430. So it's a very reliable computer for me and my needs. So it's what I generally use most of the time. And we can take a look actually at my CPU. So you can see I'm running an i5-3320M, a dual core at 2.6 gigahertz. This is the CPU I'm running right now. And here's the kernel for Triskel that I'm running at the moment. And it was originally based on Debian and it still technically is based on Debian but it's now based on Ubuntu and Ubuntu of course is based on Debian so one of the things that brought Triskel to my attention was the advocacy for Triskel by the Free Software Foundation and also Richard Stallman we all know Richard Stallman, this is his personal website, and he has talked about Triskel Linux, GNU Linux, so as you know, GNU, GNU, as people call it, is a free and open operating system running on the Linux kernel with a variety of applications. We can take a look through the menu and we can see what comes with a default Triskel install. So we have the A browser, which is the web browser I have open, performs rather well. We have an iStub email client. We have Pigeon Internet Messenger. And with Pigeon Internet Messenger, you can connect to a variety of different types of protocols. So you can go down here and you can add various different types of chat accounts and servers where you can connect with friends and meet new people as well. So you even have XMPP as an option and IRC, which is very popular and something I do spend some time on, mostly on the I2P server. So if you're interested in a private way to use IRC, take a look at the I2P uh, IRC server. There's two of them. There's actually one when you're running I2P D and one when you're running the Java I2P. But of course you can run any type of different type of IRC server that you want. Let's go ahead and take a look at more of the options here. So you even have an Electrum. So if you're interested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, an Electrum Bitcoin wallet allows you to have several different addresses as well. So you also have a Jammy client here. So it's a privacy oriented voice, video chat and conference platform. Let's go ahead and open it up. I've never actually checked it out, but maybe I'll cover it sometime. So I haven't actually looked at Jammy, but figured I'd show some of the applications because with everything going on in the world and AI being integrated into nearly every single thing you can think of that's proprietary, you may as well take a look at Linux. And I have a feeling, you know, it may just be the year of the Linux desktop, as everyone says, nearly every single year. Um, maybe it'll be the decade of open source. I think that's more appropriate. So we also have here, we have a BitTorrent client. We have a remote desktop viewer in Office. We have LibreOffice, which is an excellent uh, Office suite. So if you're interested in free and open source Office, you can actually use LibreOffice, which is a great option. There's also Apache OpenOffice and other options out there. So if you're looking to switch over, you can even do such things as, you know, export in a Microsoft compatible format. So you have that as an option uh, if you do want to do that. Um, I don't know if that's built into this right now, but I have done so in the past. 
Um, one thing that Triscoll does focus on is making everything as free and open as possible. So for example, uh, if you need non-free blobs, you know, you may not have that working out of the box. You may have to go ahead and take a couple extra steps to install less free firmware. For example, my Intel Wi-Fi card, I just tested it out. That did not work out of the box, but my AR5B22, which is one Wi-Fi card I do recommend. It's an Atheros Wi-Fi card that offers full monitor mode radio tap and uh, packet injection as well. So if you're interested in ethical pen testing and just network analysis, that could be a dual band Wi-Fi card that could interest you. So take a look at that if you're looking for more open uh, options for your Wi-Fi. And I also have a Wi-Fi 6 card as well. And that didn't work out of the box either, of course. And I didn't expect it to, but I figured I'd test it anyway before doing this video. Uh, so you can read Richard Stallman's uh, personal site and blog over at stallman.org. And you can read Richard Stallman's own experiences and interests in uh, free BIOSes and just various other things that relate to open source. So if we look at the Triscoll fact, we can see some of the frequently asked questions. And uh, maybe I should check how it's even pronounced because I haven't actually uh, looked into that. So it does seem like it's Triskel, so like skeleton. So it's tri as in trim and skel as in skeleton, so triskel. So that's how you would pronounce triskel. So I just corrected myself here live. And uh, we can take a look, and there's an article here that we talk about, you know, what you can get out of it and what it offers, a more free Linux kernel. And so that's one reason a lot of people who are real big open source advocates choose to use Triskel. And I like it. I think it's a great option. It performs rather excellent. I can't ask for more on my T430. So if you're looking for a quick performing Ubuntu based operating system, for example, in the past, I tried Ubuntu, but on older computers, it was kind of bloated, I thought. So if you're looking for a more lightweight place to start with more open source focus on the firmware end and otherwise, uh, Triscale could be a great option for you. So as you can see, we even have GIMP here, of course, which is a Photoshop type of equivalent. So if you do any type of Photoshop editing, uh, GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program is right on there. So you have a document scanner. We have various other options here. I actually installed this so I could record this video. So this didn't come out of the box, but you can easily install anything you want just by running something like apt update and then apt install something you like. Or you can take a look and search for things. So if you're looking for uh, recording software you could do something as simple as that basically anything that you put after that it's gonna look for things that are based on record uh, you can also search by category and otherwise so if you're interested in using the command line to install things you can do that and you can look up different things you can also do man app to learn more about the apt command itself comes with solitaire, comes with chess, comes with a couple games as well. Uh, in our accessories, we have a document viewer, we have character map, we have Mate uh, calculator, dictionary, just basic things, but, you know, has a lot of cool stuff. You know, if you're looking for a more open system, this could be something that could be interesting to you. Uh, we can go ahead and add and remove applications right here. So you can also use a graphical interface to search for different applications. You can go ahead if you're interested in games and go ahead to the game section. Then you can go down here. If I wanted to find FPS games, I could simply hit that and you could see, you know, open arena. That is a classic there. I remember playing a lot of Open Arena, and this is similar to the Quake 3 Arena, and I believe it is based on the Quake engine, if I recall. Now, there's also Red Eclipse. We have Cube 2, which is another thing similar to uh, the basis for Assault Cube, if you've ever tried that game out. Um, so just because it comes with you know a few very useful applications doesn't mean you're limited to that you can go ahead and you can install various others using this application right here to add and remove applications um, you can go through here I rather like 
the actual layout and the look of this. So I like Triskel. I'd have to recommend it. And I'm going to cover more Linux distributions because I thought it was a good time considering all of the things with things like recall on Windows 11, taking screenshots of everything. Now, I understand a lot of people aren't concerned about that. And with Copilot, really, at the moment, it's only available on Copilot computers. So you have to have a specific chip set in order to actually take advantage of Copilot or however you look at Copilot for it to invade your space and whatnot. Um, but it has all of the various standard uh, applications. You also have disks, which is an excellent application. If you want to manage your partitions, resize, things along that nature, uh, disks is an excellent way to do that. You can change the appearance of it so we can mess around and tweak it a bit. If you're interested in changing the look of your desktop, you know, you can change the window look. I can hit this and it'll show me immediately exactly how it would look. So if I want something a little darker, say it's late at night and I wanted something that wasn't going to be too bright, um, I could go ahead and switch over to something like that. We have software and updates. We have a startup disk creator, synaptic package manager. You can also install it. So what I'm running right now is a live USB stick. So if you want to get Triskel, go ahead to the website to download it and then just simply burn it to a USB stick. Then all you have to do is boot to that USB stick and you can try it out before you install it. So you have a chance to check it out, see how it performs for you. And if you don't like it, don't install it. But if you like it, it's very easy to do. You can use that menu option. You can also use the option right here on the desktop to install Triskel. You now it's very easy to follow their installer as well. And regarding performance, you know, I did open my Odyssey channel. It's usually a heavier website than, for example, YouTube or some of the other PeerTube options. So if you want to test out some of, you know, heavier websites, uh, that is one way you could do that. Um, so as you can see, the installer, it's very easy to follow. It's a very guided install. And anyone who watches this channel, I'm sure, would have no trouble at all going through this installer. allows you to encrypt your installation. So for example, if you ever lose your computer or if it's stolen one day, at least you know your files are protected while it's powered off. They would have to actually unlock the disk before they could manipulate your files or even read them. So that is a recommendation I do have. If you ever do a Linux installation, make sure you encrypt that installation and that's going to protect your files from being read or modified. So someone could go in and try and backdoor your system if you left your computer in the office, for example. If it wasn't encrypted, it was powered off, they could power it on, they could modify some of your startup scripts to add something else or even download something and backdoor your system. So you do want to follow the installer and opt for encryption is my recommendation. And that's just another measure to ensure that when you have it powered off, you don't have to worry about anyone getting their hands on your computer modifying anything. So we can go ahead and take a look real quick at, uh, may as well look at this, it's relatable. What's up, guys? So you can see it plays videos just fine, you know, any video you want to play is going to work just fine. So, you know, even on older systems, Triskel can be a great option for you. You know, just testing that video play there. And of course, it has the NVIDIA free driver here. And that's actually what I use on my NVIDIA based ThinkPad. I use the, I don't know how you pronounce it, the Novio, and that's actually misspelled, but. Nonetheless, I use the free driver when I do happen to use that. Now it mentions what they want you to avoid, or at least the recommendations, avoid Intel wireless cards, which mainly require non-free firmware, as well as real tech. Now preferred is Atheros, which is the one I'm actually running right now. So I can actually see that, I can do LSPCI, and I can see my Atheros card is right here. So if you want a decent Wi-Fi card, here's one that you could go for. It is dual band, so you're not limited to just 2.4 gigahertz. So if you want something that supports free and open firmware, uh, this is a Wi-Fi card that may work well for you.
So that's Triskel. I wanted to just do a brief look at it and an overview. As you can see, it performs great. You know, I have no complaints whatsoever. Uh, even has some DVD burning things. If you're interested in making your own uh, DVDs, I may actually do a video on that. So if you're interested in burning some of your own, you know, DVDs, I'm going to probably cover that in a coming video. So make sure you follow the channel if you have an interest in learning more about Linux, if you have an interest in learning more about radio, privacy, security, things along that nature. I try to cover it at a more personal level, so I'm not talking about corporate security. I'm talking about your personal security for your personal devices. So make sure to share the video, guys, so other people can learn about Triskel and what they're doing to offer a nice, free, and open Linux distribution, a GNU Linux distribution. That's what I have today, guys. Make sure to comment. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more Linux distributions on video, let me know in the comments below. And I'll be back later with more on Linux 